Don't have $500 to build a PC? Good. Pick up an Office PC and start modding. On a strict budget and content with 1080p gaming? Good. Pick up an Office PC and start modding. Want to learn about hardware and PC building but don't know where to start? Good. Pick up an Office PC and start modding. Whether you're looking for a PC on a strict budget, or you really enjoy working on computers but don't have a ton of money for projects, upgrading an older Office-type PC might be the way to go. It's a great learning experience if you're new to the hobby, and if you enjoy working with computers, it's just generally a lot of fun. If you've been around the channel, you know I have a few of these Z440s, as I'm always looking out for good deals on them. These always turn out to be a great budget option, whether they're partially modded or a bare-bones deal like this one I got for $50, which I bought two of. I have a problem. But that's neither here nor there, nor chair desk. <laughs> chair desk. There are several different models of older office type PCs that I really like for upgrades. But out of all of them, the Z440 is the one I've found to have the most potential and versatility. Even though any build on this PC is going to fall under the category of a budget build, the versatility lies in the fact that we can push the boundaries or really keep it on the cheap side while still having a solid mod. For this upgrade, Grade, I'm going to try to keep all the pricing on the low end using a lot of parts that I have around, but we'll still go over the price that I found that stuff for. And even though it is really inexpensive overall, we are still going to have a solid computer that will have no issue with everyday tasks and will even be able to do some mid-range 1080p gaming with relatively new games. First off, even though I got a couple of these for $50 and there were a bunch of them sold, that was an especially good price. For a bare-bones Z440 with the 700 watt power supply, the cost usually seems to be around $100. Which sounds like a lot for a bare-bones device, but the upgrades for this are surprisingly cheap, even though they're not bad at all. For example, I've done several videos on this channel with compatible CPUs with 6, 8, and even 10 cores. You usually running at more than 3 gigahertz, all for around $20. So first I mentioned the power supply a moment ago, specifically the 700 watt PSU. If you end up with this device specifically, that's the one you're going to want to look out for. It comes in two variations, one is the 700 watt, the other is the 525 watt. Now a 525 watt power supply isn't bad at all, but the problem is that, for whatever reason, they didn't put any GPU connectors on that variation. The 700 watt variation, on the other hand, has dual 6-pin GPU connectors, and that's going to be one of our key elements as we upgrade. Also, the most important factor, the Z440 is perfectly compatible with chair desk, because if it doesn't fly with the chair desk, it's going to fly into the trash can. That's my motto. So we're beginning at around $100 for our bare bones device and going for a strict budget build. First, let's talk CPU. Like I just mentioned, there's a lot of cheap options for this model specifically. For this build, I'm using the E5 1650V3. This is a CPU that commonly goes on eBay for $17 or $18, which is surprisingly cheap considering the processor has 6 cores, 12 threads, a 3.5 GHz base frequency, with turbo boost speed of 3.8 GHz. Not bad at all. As far as memory, this computer runs DDR4 2133 MHz ECC RAM, and can hold, like, an obscene amount of it. I think about 128 GB total. It's pretty common to find these 8 gigabyte sticks for around 12 to 14 dollars a piece, but I've been able to find them on many different occasions for closer to 8 or 9 dollars per stick, because I'm very 
V vigilant. Yeah, vigilant sounds better than hopelessly addicted to eBay. Anyway, for the sake of budget, we're just going to do two 8 gigabyte sticks of RAM for a total of 16 gigabytes. That adds another $20 to our build, and we're at around 140. Now, here's where we're going to take the biggest hit the GPU. With older computers like this, if we want to hit a decent level of gaming, we're going to have to drop some money into the graphics card. If you wanted to go super budget extreme, you could probably grab something for 30 to 40 bucks, but you would likely see very minimal gaming capability with something like that. I'm going to grab a GPU I have laying around from another build just to do some testing and we'll of course add the cost of that as well. This is the GTX 970. I picked this up a while ago from eBay for about $70. They're pretty commonly listed for 80 to 90, but it's not super rare to find them for the $70 price tag. Even though from my experience it seems to be a pretty decent value, another $30 could get a significantly better used GPU, but again, we're focusing on budget here, so we'll roll with this. Finally, we're going to need an SSD. For many of these older HP computers, I always use one of these devices. This is the HP Z Turbo Drive, which you're probably familiar with if you've been watching the channel, as well as the Z440 itself. This is an M2 to PCIe adapter which allows us to boot and run our operating system and core applications from an NVMe type SSD even though there's no M2 port on the board. The adapter just by itself is usually around $15 and often you'll see these paired with a 256 gigabyte SSD for about $30. Though typically that listing utilizes an older used SSD. What I'm doing with this build and what I do with most of them is take a newer M2 NVMe SSD kind of like this one that was on sale on Amazon for 20 bucks and combining it with the adapter that costs 15. It only cost about $5 more total and is a much faster new in-the-box drive. These types of drives are frequently on sale on Amazon so it's always good to keep an eye out but they may or may not work with one of these adapters depending on the drive itself so be careful of that. That adds about 35 to our overall cost and for the total price of the whole build we came in under $250 at 245 to be exact. While I'm doing the Windows install and installing drivers and such, let me hit you with a grave and dire warning. It's a benefit of a lot of these older Office PCs that many of them will have an official Windows key tied to the motherboard. For whatever reason, I found the Z440 to be hit or miss in this regard. I don't know absolutely, but from my experience, it seems like the variation with the 700 watt power supply has a key tied to the BIOS, and the variation with the 525 watt power supply does not. So that's something just to be aware of with this model specifically. Now let's do some testing. I'm confident we won't have any problem with basic web browsing or video playback, so we'll just jump right into gaming, which is more demanding. All right, we're running our games at 1080p with the highest in-game graphical settings. First up is Devil May Cry 5. This is a 2019 game, and it's not terribly demanding, but it is a new-ish type game. And we're running at a pretty solid 60 frames per second. It's not looking bad. And we'll move on to something more demanding. This is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Again, another 2019 game, but this one's a little more intense graphically. This one is a little more more challenging for the build, but we're still running uh, around on average maybe 55 frames per second. It's We're seeing a good bit of dips down to like 57, 58, and the occasional dip down to around 50, 51. But it looks nice and it's definitely playable. There's no serious quality problems in terms of the way it feels. Really not terrible overall, especially when we factor in the price of this machine and the price to performance ratio. If you're doing a build along these lines, I think it might be worth it to hold out 
out until you can spend another 30, 40 bucks and maybe get a 1070. Seems to be a pretty good match for this build, but really not bad overall. So a few days ago, we hit a thousand subscribers, which is incredible and still like just hard to believe. But I wanted to just take a second and say thank you to everyone who's watching and who gave a smaller channel a chance. Thank you as always, and I'll catch you later.